Okay, we're now recording. So welcome all. As I mentioned, we're kind of a small group. There's only four of us here today. So um, hopefully we can keep the discussion moving along and, and make some decisions just among the four of us at least, or we'll have a couple other folks pop in perhaps. Um, so the agenda I had a uh, link to within Slack. I'm going to assume you all have it pretty much, but uh, I'll put it in Zoom as well. Here it's in the Zoom chat. Um, so I wanted to start off first with just sort of a reminder of our schedule, uh, go into um, any more updates or any more feedback on our pull requests that are open. And I've listed the three of them. I think there's just three of them right now that are uh, still open and under review. Uh, and then move into a, a continuation of our discussion from last week around author profiles and specifically which features we feel uh, should really be in DSpace 7 versus which could be delayed for, for a DSpace 8 um, and wait more on, on like hierarchical metadata and other features that'll be coming in a future release. Uh, and then we can wrap things up uh, at the end. Um, we only have two meetings in December, of course, because of the holidays. So there's this one today, uh, and then the next one will be on, actually I had the date wrong, Tuesday, December 18th. Um, uh, that'll be our final meeting. I'm not sure how well it'll be attended since I know that's getting closer and closer to the holidays, uh, but there's quite a bit of work to try and get done in December. Uh, and that's sort of what this first uh, topic is about, just in terms of our scheduling. Um, as a reminder, uh, we really would like to get to a preview release by late January, early February. To try and keep us on schedule for that, it'd be really great if we can get entities to a to a pretty stable uh, state and ready to go into the master branch by the end of December, early January. Uh, so our timelines are getting a little bit tighter with the holidays coming up um, and with only a couple meetings left here um, in December. Um, so that's just something we need to kind of keep in mind. It'd be good to try and get more, uh, more reviews in between meetings and more moving along pull requests in between meetings, especially in December because of our lack of meetings. So the more we can kind of bring discussion to, to GitHub and to Slack um, or whatever other ways we can do it outside of meetings, the better. Uh, the more we rely on meetings to kind of touch base, I think we're going to kind of move a little bit slower than expected, and, and I'm kind of worried that that'll potentially uh, affect our target of that late January uh, preview release. Uh, so any comments or questions on that, or anybody want to add anything to that? That's kind of it for that first topic. Okay, not hearing anything. Um, so, Going into trying, uh, trying to move some of these pull requests along, as I noted, uh, we have three pull requests that are still open uh, that are under review. We have the Angular user interface pull request, which I had done an initial review on uh, and gave some feedback just from a, a code standpoint. Uh, and most of that has been, actually I think almost all of it has been cleaned up at, as, at, at this point. Uh, but we haven't had any sort of secondary reviews yet in terms of trying to test it out or, or uh, see how things look in, um, in the code or anything of that nature. So I've still been kind of waiting on, on others to get involved here and see if we can get a secondary review, review or some tests or questions in there. Um, has anybody else had a chance to take a look at that or will you have a chance to look at it in the coming week or so? Everyone's on mute right now, so I don't know. Paulo, Mark, either of you have a chance coming up here to be able to maybe take a quick look? Sorry, Tim, can you sure. rephrase what, what you just said, please? Uh, sure, so I, I would like to get more feedback on the Angular pull request, um, pull okay. request number 315 on the Angular side, and I can link that into Slack. Um, so as of the last meeting, uh, we had discussed how um, that needed to be kept open so that uh, you and Alexander, and I know Alexander isn't here today, uh, could have a chance to look at it and give give some more feedback into that. And I'm just kind of curious whether you've had that opportunity or will you have the opportunity to give feedback in the next week or so? 
Uh, yes, I, I will have the time to, to make that uh, review. I have just made some comments to uh, the other pull requests, I think, related to to entities, um, virtual metadata. And yeah, I was going to get to those two okay. next. So I was starting just with the Angular pull request, just since that's the one that was has been open the longest. So I was just kind of curious of the status of that first, and we can talk about the other two um, just in a moment. I just made a simple uh, suggestion that was related with the uh, um, default configurations, but uh, you already answered uh, almost at the same time that I did the comment. Right. Yeah, I, I recall that. I just remember from last meeting we had discussed that um, that uh, you and Alexander would have a chance to kind of give it another test and run through it since it sounded like we wanted to wait for somebody else to have a chance to look at it since I was the only one to give it a thorough review. Um, so I was just trying to get a status update, I guess, as to whether or not there's more you're planning to do. Yes, I, I'm trying to uh, at this moment to to make the the same uh, to replicate the same structure as okay. uh, Admire did, and go along and explore the the, the required steps and and um, and what is needed to to accomplish the the same result. Okay, and so that you feel that's something you'll be able to kind of uh, complete hopefully here within the next week or so? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, well then let us know how that goes and report back on the pull request, uh, okay. what you find out if you run into any problems or if you think it all looks good, that's great, great feedback as well. And hopefully uh, Alexander, well, go ahead, Mark. I just made a note to, well, to try it out what I can see. Okay, yeah, yeah, if you have any chance to give feedback into this as well, that'd be welcome. I'd just like to have somebody else uh, get some sort of feedback in here, someone else review it, basically, uh, beyond just me, because I'm not sure if I caught everything, and I didn't get a chance, admittedly, to do a full test myself. So if someone could just do a, a test of the functionality, make sure it looks good, that would be wonderful. Um, and I can also try and touch base with Alexander outside of this meeting since he hasn't been able to join today, or maybe he'll listen to the, the recording um, after the fact. Oh, and Paulo, you, you have a setup. Okay, thank you. You see you shared your, your link there. Um, if that's something you'd be willing to share, once it's ready to go, you could always share that in Slack as well um, if you want others to to play around with that setup, Paulo? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you for sharing that though, that's excellent. Okay, so that's the, the Angular PR. Um, so then, um, as noted, there's two other pull requests that are open, so I'd like to talk about those briefly as well and see what we can do here. Um, we have the Entities CSV Import pull request, which was the, the first of those open. This is 2269. I just linked into the Slack channel. Uh, and I know there have been some reviews of this, which is great to see. Um, and Paulo, this is where you had, you had added some notes and I, I agreed with your notes um, there around uh, wanting some more information. And I added some additional comments in here yesterday, mostly around a lack of Java docs and a lack of, um, of tests um, that both that the, these changes really could use both tests and Java docs. Uh, but beyond that, it, it's looking like decent code. It just needs to be better documented and have uh, tests proving out the functionality. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any other comments we wanted to add into the CSV import pull requests, um, but that's kind of an FYI for you leaving that, that um, there has been feedback there. Um, I think we're waiting on, on updates at this point in time. Yeah, no, we had, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm struggling with the cold. So, but, um, yeah, we were, um, we had a task open for the developer to work 
this pull request because we knew that there was some stuff to be done also after the two two hold on a minute the other one Oh, and the other pull request was charged, yeah. yeah. So there's uh, a task open for that, so and we'll process the feedback together with that work, so that's fine. Thank okay. You. Sounds good. So yeah, we're, we're waiting on just updates there from that developer then. Uh, and then the last of the three pull requests is 2270, and that's the virtual metadata update, um, which I know, uh, Paulo, you had a chance to review, and Alexander had a chance to review. And it, again, I reviewed it yesterday, and I see Mark added some notes this morning as well. Um, so it sounds like we have questions around this one, uh, around the implementation. And then I had asked for some additional uh, comments to describe the, the various beans that, are, that have been added in, because it's getting harder and harder to understand the purpose of each. There's just a lot of them. So I think we're kind of waiting on discussion points here or responses to the, the comments, but does anybody have anything else to say here? Yeah, I, I just from our side, I've been out sick, so I haven't, I'm just reading the comments right now. I actually wasn't working today, just to uh, uh, the call. Um, and Ben's on paternity leave until Thursday. He's back in the office on Friday. <clears throat> so I expect him to be able to look at it uh, quite quickly after he comes back. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't really comment on the concatenation um, at this moment myself, so. Yeah, it sounds like we might need feedback from Ben, so we'll just have to wait till he's able to have a chance to, to take a look at this. Because I think both of Ale Alexander and Paulo's questions are good. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just kind of wanted more, more documentation in the, the structure here of the configuration. Yep. And uh, uh, by the way, on the Angular side, the development is also ready, but we haven't created a pull request yet for that. So. Oh, for the uh, virtual metadata? Yep. Okay. That's good to be aware of. Yeah, you can already see it in the, the prototype um, installation that we have up there. There's already virtual metadata configured as per the use cases um, in the journal use case definition. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And it's good to know that, that, that there's a pull request coming there so that hopefully we can get that created once the, uh, the other Angular pull request gets merged or gets approved here. Okay. So I, that's, that's really all the updates I had on the, the pull request side. It sounds like on the Angular side, we need to just get more reviewers in and on the REST side, um, we need to get updates from from Atmire um, on the on the existing comments. So, anything else to to note here with the code coming in? Uh, there was one question from Ben. Um, he, he just uh, alerted me and said uh, the branch is twelve commits ahead and ninety nine commits behind master. Um, and if the master could be merged back into the configurable entities branch, that was his request. Sure. Uh, do you know which branch he's talking to, which side, the REST API side, I'm assuming? Uh, the link that he added was this one. Yep, that's the REST API side. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm assuming it's, it's causing some um, difficulties somewhere and he didn't give me any other um, background as to why. Yeah, that's something that uh, I'll <coughs> probably get to later this week. Uh, just kind of sync resyncing those branches. I'm writing myself a note here to do that. So thank you. Okay. Any other last thoughts or updates? on pull requests. I know there's a couple other tickets we had open 
in JIRA, which I'm assuming Ben will get back to once he's back um, in terms of just other enhancements for the REST API side, especially. Uh, yeah, so an update on that, you have, there's this one here. Um, that's already been implemented, but Ben hasn't made the pull request yet. Okay. Uh, he told me this can wait until he's back from paternity leave unless anybody would need it sooner. Um, and same basically for this Jira ticket here. All right, so they've already scheduled yep. a task for a developer. As soon as this is ready, I can create a pull request. Um, okay, so both of those have been scheduled on your end and they yep. just need pull request. Yep, okay, that sounds fine. Yeah, and I don't yeah, think there's any rush. everything to be done by the time he gets back. So I assume that by our, at, at the latest by our next meeting, probably earlier, um, this will be processed. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so then moving along from there, then I guess our next our next step here is to move in. So there's still just four of us. I was kind of hoping more folks would join us here <laughs> uh, for discussion today, but this might be a trend for December. We'll see. We'll see how many people we can get online in December. Um, so I wanted to to jump back to our author profiles. A uh, use case discussion from last week because I know that was very rushed or not last week last meeting two weeks ago um, I know it was a very rushed discussion at the end of the meeting and we didn't really get to all of the the points but I remember uh, we left that um, coming to the realization that some of the some of the use case that we've described in author profiles really is going to need to wait until dspace 8 uh, primarily for hierarchical metadata uh, and we wanted to kind of do a bit of a quick analysis as to uh, which features really are reasonable for DSpace 7 here and where we need to start to draw the line uh, for what's going to have to wait. Um, and so that's the link is in our agenda in terms of the document, the Google Doc, which I'll add into our Zoom chat here. Um, and I don't know if this, if Levin, if you've had a chance to, if you or your team have gone back and looked at this any further um, around trying to identify which areas this use case you'd recommend waiting on hierarchical metadata or if we should just kind of restart this discussion and review what we talked about last, last time. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on how to restart this? Uh, yeah, so I think the... The, the main discussion points are at the bottom of the document that it's, uh, we've called it metadata or additional data for a relation. Um, uh, and then another point that we're working on, but I don't think that there is gonna be a lot of discussion around that is how you mix plain text with entities and authority control fields <clears throat> so that you can retain ordering and you have a good uh, display if there are authors that are you know, plain metadata uh, versus entities versus uh, authority control, which is basically the same as plain metadata. Um, so that's something that's already being implemented at the moment and has a, um, a first version ready that I've seen internally, but it's not ready enough. So I think that one might be the easier one to discuss. Um, I don't think it's a, yeah, a big discussion point. Um, in terms of whether we should do this or not, um, but just the way it is implemented. So if anybody has any feedback in the way that uh, this is implemented, then uh, we would welcome that feedback. And so in the document at page nine, the bottom of page nine, it explains um, the idea, but it's mostly that a place, uh, the place column can be calculated across um, normal metadata and uh, entities. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so do um, we wanna start there then, so? Yeah, if anybody has any comments there or questions. Uh, Levin, you are talking about this page seven entities prototype document, right? 
Uh, no, about the use case and oh. definition. Sorry. You referred to page nine. I can't find that page. It's the last page. No? Uh, let me see. Maybe I have an, an older version. Of them. No, I, I can see it on page, the link that Tim shared at the bottom of page nine. It's uh, mixing plain text entities and authority control for a metadata field. Yeah, I shared the link in the Zoom chat. Paulo, I don't know if you saw that link to the Google Doc. And it's also in the agenda under number three in the agenda. Okay. It's bolded. Okay. It, it's other. And so this is basically, I mean, the, the place column we had in the original proposal for uh, entities values that is just being extended to be able to work across both entities and <laughs> regular metadata fields. So, I mean, I, I think there, there's, there's probably no discussion necessary about the fact that this is something that is needed. Um, there might be some discussion about how it's implemented. Yeah, I admit I, I have not had a chance to review this, this particular discussion point in great detail. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we assumed that this was not, I mean, we put it here because it was something that we still needed to add. Um, and, uh, but we already started on the implementation because we assumed that there are no major problems with the approach. I read this on the other document, the, the same uh, solution, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that could be, it's, in, it's duplicated. I, I have no problems also with this solution. When you are mixing uh, entities and, and uh, fields uh, and looking at the, the order or place uh, uh, field to, to to display the, those items. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I I'll I'll give this another read as well and add comments into here as needed. But I mean, it seems reasonable at a glance. I think I just want to see what it looks like once it gets to like code as well to fully understand if there's any implications along the way. No, of course. I, I think the, the only like real discussion point there, and I put it in if there would be, if it would be suitable to do to have the discussion now, but I think it's probably not the right time yet. So it's also about submission. Like how do you, um, so this is about the code. How do you do the place column? Um, uh, how do you store it as well as how it's displayed on the item page? Uh, so that's that uh, second to last section item display UI impact. And I think, you know, for those two, it's pretty straightforward for the last one <clears throat> submission. It's still difficult to discuss at the moment since the submission code has not uh, been uh, merged, but that should be one of the discussion points for early January. Um, I think once the submission code is in there, because on the usability level, I mean, we've been doing some brainstorming internally on how to best approach this, but it's not so e easy to make it very usable for users in the submission to determine, um, you know, how to do the input. Like, because as a, as a submitter, you might not know that an entity for a particular person exists or, and you have to make the choice between regular metadata authority control if it's if there's no entity but there is an authority control where the author's you know internal identifier or whatever is is stored in the, the authority control <coughs> or an entity um, so but I don't think it's very useful to have that discussion right now um, as long as the submission pull request is still open but it, I just wanted to point it out that it is something that we need to look at in early January um, and it's only one point of the submission. Um, there are other areas in the submission that also need to be um, discussed, but I don't think we can do that now. Um, right, yeah, it'd be useful to have the submission code to look at, but yeah, my inclination here is to try and simplify as much as possible and think about 
either extending or using the authority control mechanism to pull up entities as well um, so that it becomes seamless for the user. So they're basically either selecting from some object that exists either internally or externally with an identifier, whether that's an entity or an external object, or they're just entering plain text. So it's more like the current processes. But yeah, we had something that is a very short proposal there. It says could be done by adding a lookup button to the submission form that has a UI control, same as the current authority control, but with two tabs, one for authority control and other one for entities or yeah, typed items. Um, and if you add a plain text or authority control value stored as metadata, if it's as a person, it's done as a relation with the associated virtual metadata. It's, it's our, but yeah, we haven't touched on the whole topic of how to deal with this in the submission. Um, so, but right. just a reminder that we do need to come back to that in January as soon as the, well, as soon as the submission pull request has, has been merged. <clears throat> Sorry. Yep. And then the when, other, sorry. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. When, when you say uh, submission pull request, um, is there another pull request for uh, the, the submission uh, form or support that on the, the Angular side or? or? It's the, the main uh, pull request for the DSpace 7 submission. So at this moment, there is no submission in the DSpace 7 code. Yes, uh, yes. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, that's still coming. Uh, I'll link it here into our Zoom chat. It's uh, PR 279 in the Angular side. Okay. So it's being worked on by For Science, but but yeah, it's not yet merged. So this is what what has a dependency right now. Uh, we really need to get this merged on the Angular side. Um, and we have a promise that this will be merged within December or be ready to go in December um, because currently yeah, it does affect some of these decisions on the entity side, that it's kind of slowing things down a little bit on entities. Yeah, and I would say plan B for us is that if it's not ready enough by early January or it's still not merged, then we can at least start discussing this on a conceptual level, um, but not yet on a code level. So. Well, technically, I mean, you could start to analyze the code that already exists there. I know that's not the easiest thing to do in a pull request, but I mean, the code is there. Um, mostly what this pull request is waiting on is it needs to be upgraded to Angular 6 and then it needs um, tests. Um, tests implemented, uh, but the actual code itself already exists. So technically, I mean, you could start looking at the code and seeing how it could be implemented, but I definitely understand that ideally you do that once the code is merged. Yeah, yeah and it also needs a, a review cycle um, once it's ready, of course, but yeah, no, let's, let's not go in, into that. That's uh, for tomorrow's discussion. I guess. Right. Yeah, I was just noting that it has gone through some review cycles, but part of the re what the review cycle brought out was that there was a lack of tests and there were um, some fixes that were noted, but I I'm just noting that, that the code is getting to a point that it seems like it should be a little bit more reasonable. Um, but you're right, we can discuss it more in the DSpace 7 meeting tomorrow. Yeah, I have some comments from Ben for the DSpace 7 meeting tomorrow on the current code. Because Ben sure. was waiting to review it until the, the the pull request was completely there and not just the open repositories demo <clears throat> pull request. And I asked him to go ahead and review the demo pull request already anyway, because otherwise we might run short on time and he did have some feedback there. Okay. But I'll, I'll relay that tomorrow. Um, Sounds good. I think the, the main discussion point here um, is the question of how do we add additional data to relations? Um, that's the, the other discussion point. Um, <clears throat> and how far we want to go with doing that. And whether or not that's something for DSpace 7 or DSpace 8. And kind of depends on the, the strategy we want to follow. The, the first one is an additional field in the relationship database table, which is very simple. It's a similar approach to what um, DSpace Chris does with authority control is just add extra fields 
to the relation without defining what's stored in that field. You just know that there's something stored there, <clears throat> but you don't know what it is. Um, besides that it's plain text, you could then use that to store the name variant <clears throat> that you're using for that particular relation. Um, a second alternative would be to what we've called metadata for a relation, but yeah, it depends on how you want to look at it, but um, where you would also want to qualify what it is that you're adding as data to the relation. So it's not just a, a text field, um, but that it also has a clear description of what it is. So that, for example, if it's a DC date dot start date, that you can interpret that and that you know, okay, this is a start date of the relation. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the first option is simple to implement, but if it's this is going to be used for more than just name variants, it's probably not sufficient. Um, and then the, the second solution is quite a bit more work to do, but would also have more longevity, basically. I think that's the, the, the main choice and, and trade-off here. Right, and this was specifically where last meeting we had discussed that this might be better implemented as hierarchical metadata instead of? Well, no, not, not, not really. So not the name variant per se, but... Um, uh, the other use case where you say, I want to know which publications have been done by a particular org unit mm -hmm. and doing that by resolving the uh, relation first between a publication and an author and then the author and the org unit. Um, where we would suggest that you make the relation directly between a publication and an org unit. Um, and then to solve the quote unquote problem with how do you know which author has which affiliation by having hierarchical metadata. So that if you have a publication where you have three authors with three different affiliations, two inside your institution, one outside of your institution, that and you have the links between that publication and those uh, two authors that are in your institution that are both uh, entities. The third one, plain text metadata. And then you have your three affiliations, one also plain text because it's outside of your institution and then two relations to the org units. And then in the item, you need hierarchical metadata to say, oh, okay, this author is, has this affiliation. Right. Um, rather than saying, okay, you have that secondary relation and you resolve it through that secondary relation, which would require to have dates, start and end dates. Um, uh, but I think those two are not so related. I think the, the org unit use case is just, is, is another use case. Mm -hmm. um, here it's, it's mostly the question of, okay, if you want to attach, <coughs> I'm sorry, additional data to a relationship, um, how do you do that? How, how do you store that additional data? And like I said, there, the, the first solution is a, is a simple solution. Um, and the second one is a more involved solution but allows more complicated and more and different use cases, basically. Um, and we could say, you know, we don't go for either of the two in DSpace 7. We could say we go for solution one in DSpace 7 and throw it out and do solution two in DSpace 8. Um, or we could go for solution two immediately. <clears throat> so those, I think, are our three options. Um, then, like I said, the main question is how well would you like to, would we like to see data that's attached to a relationship be typed um, without uh, just making that implicit in the code? So uh, uh, stepping back just for a moment, um, perhaps a silly question, but is it possible, would it be possible to, to simply handle like author variants in DSpace 7 as virtual metadata? 
or name variants is virtual metadata, where essentially the author profile can pull that information from the publications linked to that author profile and just display them and kind of filter out duplicate values. I know that may not be scalable if you have hundreds and thousands of publications. That was the, indeed the was that concern. Yeah, that, that was one of the reasons why we discarded that option because on a performance level, um, it's it's more difficult. I think that's covered in a document somewhere. Let me just check. Um, but yeah, that, that would not be the most scalable approach, of course. And that's where you're wanting to duplicate that information either in a database column or on the relation itself, essentially. Um, I, if I remember correctly, um, it's not duplicated. It's not stored on, it's, it's shown in the publication as virtual metadata. Oh, so it's actually, it would not exist on the publication, but instead that, that name variant moves to the relationship? That's how I understood it, but I could be wrong. Um, that sounds like the right way to do it. So, and why would you, why, I guess why, I'm going to ask why is that the right way to do it, just out of curiosity? Like, what was convinced you of that? Well, it Oh dear, now I have to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot, but, but I'm, not, I'm not convinced one way or the other yet. I'm just trying to get my mind around it, to be honest. Okay, well, uh, just you know, having, just knowing the variance of an author's name doesn't tell us which one was used in this particular publication. Right. So it needs to be part of the relationship, not inferred from the attributes of the author. Right, I, I agree it would not be on the attributes of the author. I was more thinking it would be on the publication though, rather than on the relationship. Um, but I could be convinced otherwise, and maybe it's just a performance thing that puts it, puts it on the relationship. Well, I'm not sure why that would be an attribute of the publication because I would see it as an attribute of um, the publication because it's how it was written on the publication. So it's the name that was used on the publication. Um, and that name may or may not be an entity within the system. So it may or may not even have a relationship. Um, so some authors, if they're just author strings that don't ha aren't represented as entities or anything else would have to be on the publication. And I just was wondering if all authors should be on the publication. Does that make sense? Not sure. Yeah, but, um, it, it can, like the, the two implementation options can support both those scenarios, uh, if I understood it correctly. So th these are two separate problems, basically. One is like, okay, where do you put the control on the publication or on the author profile? Um, and that's one discussion. And a second discussion is, okay, if you need uh, to add information to a relation, um, then how do you do that in the code? How do you store it? And, and how far do you go with that? So <clears throat> I saw the, um, the, the, use, the, the question, the use case of, okay, do you store a name variant as actual metadata of a publication or actual metadata of an author profile um, more as a question of control where you can actually make good arguments for both cases. There are pros and cons to both cases. Um, one of the things that for me personally, this is just my personal view, um, convinces me to say that the best approach is to copy it from the author to, to have the actual metadata be on the author profile and then be attached to the relation for a particular publication is one that you give an author more control over which name variants can be used. And secondly, I think it's even more important as a usability reason is that if I'm a cataloger at a library or at a scholarly communications um, office, how would I know that this is a name variant of a particular person? 
right? So if you have it stored in the author profile and you're in the submission and um, somebody has uh, mistyped Tim Donahue, but typed Donahue with an E instead of an O, right? it's a very common misspelling of your name. There are lots of yep. people who have that problem. And, and maybe you have that actual problem that I just said, but um, <clears throat> then you can, if you put that name variant in your profile, and I'm a cataloger and I'm typing Donahue and then it gives me the suggestion. It says, Hey, this is uh, detected as a name of an author with an entity at our institution. Do you want to link it to this entity? And then the cataloger can go like, oh, okay, great. That's the person that I want <clears throat> after checking your author profile and seeing that you have the same affiliation as the person on the publication. And it's like, oh, okay, it's Tim Donahue. And it, they just say, okay, I pick that one. And, and you go from there where if it's on the publication, you just type it and who, who's going to know at that point to attach that to your author profile. You, I mean, I assume if, if anyone besides you or your co-author is, is doing the cataloging, then there's no way of knowing because you don't know all the, you might know that as a cataloger of your five top researchers in your institution, but not of anyone else. Yeah, I understand your point, and I just don't know that I agree that that requires that information to be stored on the author profile. Um, I mean, I think an author does have like preferred names, and those are kind of like name variants, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that an author even remembers all of the various names they've used in publications. <laughs> No, of course, um, but if, if then there would be a, a question of, is this one of your name variants, then one cataloger has to ask that question once the author says, yes, you add it to the name variants and in the yep. future, other people would know. And so <laughs> that, that kind of flow of adding the data, I don't see how that could work if you, um, I think if you turn it the other way around and give, the control to the person who's doing the, the, the submission, there will be a lot of cases where authors will have to go in and add relations that, that catalogers have missed. Yeah, I, I agree. So let me poke at that a little bit just cause I'm not sure I fully agree yet. <laughs> um, my, my inclination rather than trying to, like I think we're making almost an assumption that this information needs to all be stored in the database layer. Whereas I would encourage us to think about ways that we should be indexing this information so that it's more easy to find. Um, so I, my inclination would be that the catalogers shouldn't really care where this information is stored as long as it's well indexed so that you know the name variants and personal and preferred names and you can search across those for all the people who do have entities and whether that information is stored on the author profile or stored on the publication shouldn't matter as long as it's all indexed together so that you can find um, the relationships that you're looking for. So I guess I'm not sure that storage location matters too much in that scenario. It's more of a matter of that you need to be able to search across an index of this information. Does that make any sense? So but yeah, where would you then create a separate index with, with all this information? Because what you basically need to be able to do is run a query across all possible author names and then get back a specific entity that carries that author name. What I'm kind of saying is that the, the virtual metadata should almost be indexed and easily findable in an index so that if you treated this, a different way of thinking about this, and maybe this is totally, totally wrong, but let me just get it out there. So if we treated this as virtual metadata, so the author profile does not have, well, maybe it has, your, it has preferred names on the author profile, but it does necessar not necessarily have all name variants. The name variants themselves are stored in the publication. So suppose the name variants on the publication, the author profile might have some preferred names, but you have an index of the virtual metadata. So the name variants get pulled across as virtual metadata. 
um, from the publications to the authors, and you have an index of all that information so that it's easy to display that virtual metadata on the author profile because it's well indexed within Solar. Um, and because it's well indexed in Solar, you can also search across it very easily. So the catalogers can say, um, who in my system has either a name variant or a preferred name that is T. Donahue. Um, and then that can come up with a list of who, who has that information or, or who has one of the, the two, and then they can select the correct author profile to link this new publication to. That's the way I would think of it, is that virtual metadata needs to be well indexed, both so it can be displayed in a scalable way, as well as so that it can be searched as if it's kind of on both objects. So it's kind of both on the author profile object and on the publication object. The reality is it's only stored in one place, but it's indexed as if, it is, as if it's on both. But in, in, in the, 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 the solution that's currently on the table, the, it's also being indexed in Solar. Because if you would search for it in, in, in the submission, it's also a search in Solar, but it's rather a search on the, the main name and the preferred or name variants um, on the author profile. Yeah, I understand that, that there's different ways of doing this. I'm just noting, I'm just questioning whether we actually need to be storing this information like attached to a relationship, which is what the solutions here revolve around, um, is actually adding data on relations. I am starting to question more and more whether that's actually necessary or if that can be implemented in a different way where it's more of that our solar indexes need to be able to track um, what information kind of almost belongs to the relation without actually storing it there, if that makes any sense. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying that relations are just loose links and could be re remain loose links. The name variant, we can choose a place for it um, in terms of whether it belongs in the publication of the author profile, but within Solar, it appears in both places because there is a relation there. Um, so it appears as if it's on both in Solar, but at the database level, it's actually really only on one. Yeah, I, I agree with with your vision of the, the how it should be. Um, the the data should be uh, separated. I think solar can be a great tool to to allow the the searches and and I th I also agree that we can use the, the virtual met metadata metadata to to enhance the 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 items on both sides. If you are searching for person. Um, for authors related to to the case you you, you said you, you you if you want to search for instance uh, G uh, Paulo and uh, you you will be given um, publications re associated with G Paulo. And you also can search the same as you, you as you want to search only for um, authors. Yeah, so I guess I'm I'm trying to propose. Yeah, I agree with that, Paulo. Um, I think it, I'm trying to propose a different solution here, which might be simpler for DSpace Seven. Um, if we find that this isn't scalable and we actually do need this metadata on relations, then we could add that into DSpace 8. But I'm just kind of questioning whether we even really need that metadata on relations or whether we've proven it. And I'm not sure if we have. Can you draw how this would work? Could I draw how this would work? Uh, I could. So it's essentially like, um, trying to think of the best I don't know how I, could, I guess I could share my screen I'm trying to think of how I could how I could represent this okay, Here, let well, me. Maybe, maybe not just right now but you know could because you know we have things going in several different directions I think I need to process it visually I don't know about the rest of you 
Yeah, I could I could represent it. The basic idea is to try and lean a little bit more on solar for um, solar basically would act as the this uh, data on relationships essentially. So we're talking about additional data for relations and rather than actually storing those in the database, I'm implying that they should be stored in solar because they're kind of just indexed information. Uh, but yeah, I could draw how it would work, but the, the concept would essentially be that um, name variants would just exist on the publication because you enter them into the publication. You are trying to find a person that matches that name variant to create that relation, um, obviously. And so the first time this happens, so the first object you put in for, for T. Donahue, uh, maybe you find Tim Donahue in the system. You're like, okay, that seems like a reasonable match. Let's create that relation. At the point that that relation is created, that basically is an index within solar um, that says, you know, okay, I, I've created a relation between this author and this publication. So now I know um, in solar that uh, the author has a name variant of T. Donahue because that's what exists on the publication. And I also know um, that this publication, you know, uh, or that uh, the publication is linked up to the author. So both ways, like basically it's almost virtual metadata could, be, could flow both ways across that relation and it can be represented in solar as if it's on both objects. Um, so I can try and just to draw that out, but that's kind of the, the general idea there. Go ahead. Yeah, and then if, since this exists only in solar, if something bad happens to the index, how do we get the information back? you simply re-index your content. So it's all, because it's all represented in virtual metadata in your system, if you create a new virtual metadata field, uh, you rerun your solar re-index and it re-indexes that, that virtual metadata as if it's on the object. So it does exist in the database also. It exists in the database, but only on one side. So it exists, what I'm saying is it would exist in, in the example of a name variant the name variant would exist in the database on the publication only. It appears virtually on the author profile and it gets indexed in solar as part of that relationship so that it, um, so that, that relationship can be searched. But you're right, it does always exist within the database. I'm just saying it exists on one object. <coughs> not both. Can I share my screen? Sure. Uh, this this is uh, um, we are just uh, um, experiencing um, author profiles in this phase five, and we extend the model to support something like this. This information is about an author that has an orchid. This is the, the, the open air four version of the, the schema. Um, let me try to do this pretty way. Okay, so we have an author here and we have some, some metadata about the, the publication. This, this data is stored in the, the, we have a specific table for authors. This, this um, data is stored in, in that uh, table and uh, how can I show you? So you're, you're essentially showing the idea of the virtual metadata coming from a different table? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to, we have an author profile. Sorry. We have an author profile table that is referenced in the metadata structure here let me filter this is this space five so 
So, so we'll have to wrap up here shortly, unfortunately, Paulo. But sorry, this is data related associated with uh, an author, and this is related with that publication. So we, when we show um, this XML file, we are exposing data that's on both sides, on the publication side and on the author side. Right, yeah, yeah, which is great. Go ahead. No, I, I want to share, I, I, I just wanted to share this. So to, to show that um, I, I think we can use solar to, to do the, the um, and, and virtual metadata to, to, to do that part, to, to mingle the, the, the two entities. That's what, what, what we are talking here, mingle data. We need, we need this. We need to have parts of some uh, entity and have parts of another entity. Yep. Yeah, does that, I don't know if that helps the context here, Mark, at all. I know we're about near the top of the hour, but I think this is, this is exactly what I was saying is kind of you're pulling metadata from two different objects. And when you're doing that sort of pulling from two objects, you could pot potentially lean on solar to index it better so that it, that metadata could appear more easily on each object just for a scalability factor. So you don't have to actually pull each object from the database. And I think that would be beneficial then for things like author profiles and name variants. I'm just curious, do we actually know that that's an inherently slow thing to do? At the database level, I, I don't know. No, not necessarily. I'm just noting that I don't think we, my whole point of bringing this up is I'm not convinced that we need to have metadata on the relationship itself. I'm more pointing at the fact that I think it'd be, we should consider just having metadata on the entities and the relationship be metadata-less other than it's just a link between two entities and any information that we can't easily scalably get from the entity metadata um, we could store in solar. So I'm just pointing that as an alternative option. Okay, but I worry that we're introducing complexity as a premature optimization before we know that we have a problem. The complexity of solar? Yeah, this, this cache that has to be maintained. So yeah, I can give you, I, I'll give you that. So maybe we don't need to have solar in here at all. I'm just, my whole, my whole point of bringing this up was around this discussion point of adding data on relations. And I feel that um, this is another potentially premature optimization. I'm asking why do we need the metadata on the relations? It can either stay on the entities themselves or if we find that that's not scalable, then we can bring it into solar and index it. You know, concept, conceptually, it's a part of the relationship, but you know, if the performance is good enough, we can infer it. Right. Yeah, and that's where I'm saying, could we use virtual metadata like this? Because that's our, our way of inference. So if we can use virtual metadata and the performance is okay, then that's the way we should do it. If we can't, if we hit performance issues, then maybe that virtual metadata needs to be indexed in some way in solar so that we can get around those performance issues. Although it may make sense to you know, just you know, add an index in the database, we can look at both. Yep. Yeah, so I don't know if we've come to a decision point here. I guess I'm just noting <laughs> that uh, I think it, it feels like to me the whole section of additional data for relations um, seems like something we could potentially get around in DSpace 7 if we can lean more on virtual metadata uh, and figure out if that's a, a possible solution for now rather than the two options presented here. Well, I mean, so two things. One, I think we're tying this too much to just the name variant um, use case. There might be other use cases where you want um, uh, additional data attached to a relation. 
and we should think about if there are other use cases um, that, where that could be useful and then take those into account as well. Because if you, for example, talk about a start and an end date, um, <clears throat> then the, the, the solution of working with an index um, would be a lot more complicated. Um, and uh, I'm forgetting my second point. Yeah, sorry, I'm still not 100% recovered. I was also trying to read, Ben wrote a, a one page um, text about what he thinks about this and I was trying to read it while you were talking and uh, making sense of it at the same time, but uh, apparently that, that's not an option today. But. <laughs> Uh, I think we're tying the two together a little bit too much. Um, and the, there's also the question, which we don't have to answer today, of do we really need this name variant um, implementation in DSpace 7? Or is this something we want to look at for DSpace 8 as well and table the whole discussion for DSpace 8? Because it is not a simple discussion. And I also would like to avoid investing a lot of time in an implementation that in the space A2 would say, okay, now let's throw this out and start from scratch. You know, you, you make a good point that we're just now introducing entity support. It's early days. Um, we need a lot more information back from the field about what people want to do with it. Right. Before, right. We, before we make a lot of you know, decisions that we may have to unmake later. Yeah, and I think we're actually all saying the same thing. That is actually why I'm trying to turn this into a discussion around virtual metadata, because I don't see the point in, in trying to implement complexity of metadata on relations until we have our minds around what people need there. Um, and I don't think we have that. And so when I say this should be implemented as virtual metadata, I'm trying to come to a simple solution that allows us to still say, yeah, we have a basic support for author variants, but it's really just virtual metadata um, until we can figure out if that's the appropriate place for it. So if someone comes up with a significantly different use case for this you know, infrastructure, uh, it would be good just to, to write it up, and, you know, drop a note on Slack or something so that we can look at it and contrast them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I, I, I get the sense that we're all actually saying the same thing. We're saying it in different ways. So I think that this metadata on relations should be a later discussion. It's not something for DSpace 7 because we don't have our minds around what information would logically go here. And I'm not convinced there's many use cases that need to go here once we have hierarchical metadata, but I could be proven wrong. And that's where users will, will prove it to us one way or the other. Um, so I'm just trying to simplify this and keep it limited a little bit more to author variants just because I think that's probably the highest priority use case that I can think of um, and trying to see if we can just do those as virtual metadata in the same way that we're using virtual metadata for journal relationships and things of that nature and just see how that works. Um, so it, that does not seem like any significant change to me. Uh, it seems like it's basically like we're not doing much anything here other than adding in a new virtual metadata field for author name variants. So it's almost the simplest route here. But, um, but we need to wrap this up because we're already over time. Um, but that's kind of, it seems like to me we're all really actually coming around to the same sort of basic solution. Uh, and then we just need to see how that sort of plays out as we start to play with it in the data. And that's where solar could be an uh, attribute if we find performance issues of some sort, or we could just drop name variant support altogether if, if it's not working right. But I'd like to just see some analysis of that or more information around that. Yeah, I, I would personally advocate to drop name variant um, functionality for at least the preview release. Um, because entities was mentioned as a very important part of the preview release so that we can focus on getting all of the other things right. Because um, uh, there's still some work to be done on our side. Um, a lot of it has been ongoing in the last two weeks, but there's still some work to be done on the other topics that I mentioned before we got into this discussion and that we could 
uh, table this until after the preview release and then also ask everybody to think uh, for some time about the different solutions um, for the name variance problem and extend it to other use cases where we could think of uh, metadata for a relation, maybe get some community input. Because I think we still, I mean, if we are able to properly finish all of the other implementations around entities, I think we still have sufficient time between early February and um, the next dates that have been discussed for the release of DSpace Devon to still do something. I think that's reasonable. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess the only thing I was going to note is that what I'm suggesting I think is very minor. <laughs> It would just be adding a new virtual metadata field just to see how it plays out. But if we'd rather do that after um, after the preview release, then that's that's fine with me. Um, I just see this as a configuration change, essentially. So yeah, but with the significant performance impact. So, I mean, unless that performance impact has been looked into in detail and okay. uh, some of the other questions. I mean, I'd... I'd um, we also, you know, came up with this solution very quickly um, on the spot when we first started thinking about name variants, but the longer we thought about it, the less we got convinced of the different options. And okay. even today, we are not 100% convinced that it should be one of the two options that we put forward. And I think a, a big part of answering that question is <clears throat> trying to also think about other use cases where we would need data attached to the relation because then only then we can really make the right decision um, about this. Okay. Yeah, we can go ahead and table it then for after the, the preview release. I, I just have a feeling this is going to come up from users almost right away, but I could be wrong. Yeah, no, um, in every implementation we'll we've done with author profiles, there are name variants there. Um, but the way that they want to deal with those name variants is very different. So we don't have two exact same implementations of name variants with the projects that we've worked on. Okay. Would someone be able to you know, spend just a few minutes jotting down how they you know, those implementations differ from one another so that we can start to look at them and pull out patterns. It sounds yeah, like a request for you, Levin. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's already in, in the document. I'll add some of it, uh, the, the, some extra information to it, but I think it's more like the alternative solution um, should also be added to it. Um, I don't know if you if I gave you edit. I think you have edit rights um, to that document. So that third option be. I think Mark, that's what you're referring to. That the third option is also there. Well, I'm just you know thinking that if you've done several different implementations and they don't work the same, and they have different requirements, uh, I'd like to understand understand the universe of requirements better and see if see where there are commonalities. Uh, yeah, it has a lot to do with, um, to, I, I can't comment on the details of all of those implementations because some of them are not uh, public repositories. Um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but so th it mostly comes down to where you want to put the control over using name variants. Um, uh, with catalogers or how you want to deal with the metadata on the publication. Some people want the metadata of the publication to be exactly the way that it's on the, you know, the, the, the publication itself, the PDF, and others would like to see their name corrected in the metadata in the repository. They say, okay, we want to have like my misspelled name on the publication itself. I don't care. But on the public on the, the the landing page, the item page, they want it correctly, and yeah, it's all about where where is the control over what gets used as name variants and whatnot, and how does it get displayed, and different institutions have different opinions about it. So, 
Um, I think right. even if we would come forward with an implementation on name variants, I'm quite certain that there will be people making comments that they want the other way around, reg regardless of which solution we pick. So this, this sounds like something we could take to Slack or it could appear in a Google document or something so we don't have to hold everybody here. Yeah. Um, let, yeah, let's go ahead and close up the meeting. Um, I think that we've come to a conclusion though that we'll name variants can probably wait till after the preview release um, and we can kind of go with author profiles as is for the most part. So then in two weeks, we will be really concentrating more on pull requests and ensuring that the code is get, has been reviewed um, and moving things forward as quickly as possible so that we can try and get um, this code ready to go hopefully by the end of December, early January. So, and if there's any other topics that need to come up in two weeks, uh, pass them my way, but we'll next meet on Tuesday, December 18th at the same time. Okay, great. Okay, okay. so Thank thanks all. Okay. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.